This is part three of the Winter Raptors of the Mendocino Coast series. And this time we're going to tackle the Buteos and add on a Harrier. Buteos are immediately recognizable by size and shape. They are large, heavy-bodied birds with big, deep, broad wings. Their wings are longer than the occipiters, and the birds themselves are heavier looking. There is uh, one of the Buteos that can be confused for occipiters, and we'll talk about that when we get to it. In this opening slide, though, you just get a sense of the tremendous variety that these birds can display. And that's part of the challenge of identifying them in the field, is some of the individual species di display a tremendous amount of variability. Let's get started. And this is the classic Buteo. Notice, first of all, the long, broad wings and the heavy body look, and a relatively short tail. This profile is really different from either the falcons or the occipiters. Now we can get down to species level identification, and the first thing that really jumps out is that dark bar at the leading edge of the wing that is the one reliable field mark for a red-tailed hawk. Now there are other marks, and one of those is just barely visible in this photo. You often hear people talk about the belly band as a, uh, a great field mark for red tail, and it is when you can see it. Sometimes you can't see it, uh, but you, and when they're soaring, look at that leading edge of the wing, and on everything except a dark morph, you'll see that black band, and it's a very reliable mark. None of the other Buteos show that. Adult red tails do have a red tail. This one is particularly pale, but it is still reddish, and that's also reliable when you see uh, they are the only Buteo with a red tail. So when you see the red tail, you know you've got a red-tailed hawk. The problem is you frequently don't see it. Now this bird is a little unusual in that it has a dark head but a pale throat. Most red tails have a dark head and dark throat which contrasts sharply with their pale chest. Now here's an immature bird. Notice that it does not have a red tail. It does, however, still have that dark bar on the leading edge, which is called the patagials. Those are the patagial feathers that are black on red-tailed hawks. And this one displays the classic dark head, dark throat, pale chest, and belly band. And is a great combination to look for on a soaring raptor that will confirm that it's a red-tailed hawk, whether or not the tail is red. Juvenile and immature red tails have a brown tail with very fine barring across it, which is actually different from the tails on other Buteos, but it takes a while to get used to that one. Oh, what if they're perched? Now we can't see that, that patagial bar so we've lost our most reliable field mark. The bird on the far left is an adult red tail and displays the classic red tail. So we're done there. We know that's a red-tailed hawk and we know it's an adult. Before we leave it, notice where the wingtips land, about halfway down the tail. So we know this is not an occipiter and we can apply that to the other two birds as well. It's also very heavy bodied, much more so than any of the occipiters. Well, the bird in the center is a little trickier because it's just kind of a dark brown bird. There's not much in the way of field marks to sh see there, but look at the tail. As I mentioned before, that fine barring, uh, brown tail with fine light and dark brown bars is a good mark for immature red-tailed hawk. Dark head and no particular marks on the back bird on the right is showing you a fairly typical look for young red tails with all those white spots in the wing and on the shoulders. And uh, they frequently, if they have their back directly toward you, those white spots on the shoulders will make a kind of a V on the scapulars. And that's very, very typical for young red-tailed hawks. This is what the, a young, an immature red tail might look like when you're looking at it from below. 
Again, you can see the belly band in this particular picture, but if you're a long way off, it might not show up. What will show up, even at a tremendous distance, is the contrast between that dark head and the pale chest. And that all by itself is enough to really identify a red-tailed hawk. There are other Buteos that have a dark head, but they also have a dark chest. There are others with a pale chest, but they also have a pale head. The combination of dark head and pale chest is good for a red-tailed hawk. Ah, uh, yeah. This is a dark morph. All Buteos, well, not all. Uh, most Buteos come in a variety of morphs, different color schemes from light to, pale, light to dark morph. And that makes them a lot harder to identify, especially the dark morphs, because most of the field marks disappear. For example, this dark morph red tail does in fact have black batagials, but you can't see them because the feathers all around them are dark as well. In this case, it's an adult and you can see a dark red tail. That really helps. Uh, immature dark morph red tails can be extremely difficult to identify, but again, you will see that that barring on the tail, and that helps. And before we leave red tails, here is the perched version of a dark morph. In fact, this is the specific type, sometimes called a rufous morph, because they have a reddish brown color. Uh, believe it or not, you can mistake these for a golden eagle, or at least I can. But these are both red tails. The one facing away from us is an adult and shows both the red tail and also the that uh, pale V on the scapulars that I mentioned earlier. And then the big bird on the left, probably a big female, uh, might be either, I think that's actually an adult as well, but you can't tell from this view. But it is in fact a red-tailed hawk uh, and basically you can conclude that by ruling everything else out. It's basically not anything else. Rule one of raptor birding is it's a red tail. And uh, that's kind of a joke, but it also is helpful because they are much more abundant. Uh, about 90% of the Buteos on the Mendocino coast are red tailed hawks. And so you just start by assuming it's a red tail and then try to prove that it's something else. If you can't rule anything else out, it's a red tail. Okay, let's move on to the next species. This is the red-shouldered hawk, a fairly common year-round resident here on the Mendocino coast. Right away you notice that these look a lot different from red tails. And they look a lot different from each other. This is a an adult bird on the left and an immature bird on the right. And they go through a big change from the immature to adult plumage. Don't even look like the same bird. Well, you can tell right away they're not a red tail. In part, they're a lot smaller and a little different shape, but they have a completely different color pattern about them. Even the immature bird, which does have kind of a dark brown head and a sort of pale chest, but the contrast is not nearly as great as it is on red tails, and their chest are always streaked with brown like this bird. The adult on the left is quite easy to identify. They have that rich cinnamon to even bright orange chest and their back feathers are uh, basically spotted black and white. They look like a flying checkerboard sometimes. The tail as you can see is banded. It's dark with narrow white bands. But really that, you know, that pattern of the black and white pattern on the back of the wings and the orange chest and the sort of pale brown to grayish brown head, not, there's nothing else that's going to show you that here on the Mendocino coast. The immature birds are a little trickier because at first glance they're quite similar to immature Cooper's hawks. They are much larger and heavier bodied but often size comparisons are difficult to make out in the field when you just have one bird to look at. And the other thing about these red-shouldered hawks is their flight habit is considerably different from other Buteos. They're smaller and their wings are a little shorter and their wing beats are quick and snappy, 
almost like the way a Cooper's Hawk flies. They alternate between a few snappy wing beats and then gliding with stiff wings in much the same way that Cooper's Hawks do. So you need to get a good look, uh, but there are some good clues that we'll give you. If they're perched like this, you see that contrast between a brown head and the streaked chest and the barred belly. That's completely unlike a Cooper's Hawk. So the chest, you see those vertical blurry streaks, almost like the way a sharp shin looks, but then it changes when it gets down to the lower chest and belly and it's got those horizontal bars and the kind of triangular, uh, like a delta shape. And uh, so that pattern is key for immature red-shouldered hawks. They also often look like this bird with their crown feathers partially raised, uh, like they're having a bit of a hair day. That's real common with these guys. It gives them a kind of a big-headed look. And you can also see, even on this bird, the, the spangled white patches on the upper wings. Here we have a red-shouldered hawk soaring. This is an adult red shoulder with the classic pattern, the cinnamon chest and wing linings, contrasting very sharply with those checkerboard pattern wings. You can also see in the outer wings, in the, at the base of the primaries, there are white patches uh, that form a kind of a curve, a uh, commonly known as the wing commas. These are a little subtle in adult birds like this one, but they're a great mark on immature birds in flight, which can otherwise be difficult to identify. Uh, those wing commas are translucent, and so as they flap, the light will shine through them, and you can see it at a tremendous distance. You can also see the tail pattern here quite clearly with that dark, dark bands, alternating with narrow pale bands. And for size comparison, a couple of common ravens, you can see that these are fairly small buteos. Well, here's a winter visitor. The red tails and red shoulders are year round residents on the Mendocino coast, but these ferruginous hawks only show up in winter. They start to arrive in November and they stay until about February. And in the, that period of time, they offer a spectacular sight. These are the largest North American buteo. Uh, they're almost as big as e eagles. They have large bills, almost like eagles. And uh, they're sometimes called the milky giants because they're so pale and so pretty. Right away, you can see they have a pale head, pale neck, pale chest, pale belly. They are pale all the way from the head down to the vent. You can also see on this perched bird a little bit of the rusty shoulders that give them the name Ferruginous Hawk. Here's an immature bird perched. So you can see that it has a pale head, pale chest, pale belly, and basically just medium brown wings and back. They don't develop that rusty reddish color on their wings until they become adult birds. But that pale head really sets them apart from the red tails and they are much larger than red shouldered hawks so it's hard to mistake these birds for anything else. They also have relatively long wings. Notice the wing tip on this bird goes all the way down to the tip of the tail. Uh, that's a feature they share with the Swainson's hawk which is extremely rare here on the coast. Most buteos the wing tips will fall just short of the tip of their tails. Here's what they look like in flight, and you see what I mean about white, white throat, white chest, white belly, white undertail. In fact, their upper tail is white as well, so you can, at, at a glance, sometimes think you're seeing a bald eagle at first because of the white tail, but they're considerably smaller and they don't have a white, uh, they don't show that same contrast between a dark body and a white tail. These guys have a very pale body. Here's an adult in flight looking at the upper side, and there you can see why they call them ferruginous hawk, that rusty color on their upper wing. Notice also a kind of a dirty white color to the tail, and it uh, kind of transitions from bright white at the rump down to a grayish color at the tail tip. 
The other thing you can see is some wing windows. There's white uh, in the primary feathers that show when they're spread out like this. And so when they fly, it often looks like they have white patches in their outer wings. Well, here's another white-headed bird, but look at that black belly. This is a rough-legged hawk, and these are very rare winter visitors here. They're much more common in northeastern California. Here on the Mendocino coast, uh, it's a pretty good year if we can find one. And they're uh, an adult in the classic plumage like this is pretty easily recognizable. White head, white chest, and black belly. And from behind, you can see they have a white tail with a very broad black band at the tip. Again, this is a different look than what the ferruginous hawk gives you, where it just kind of gradually shades out to a gray tip. You could be forgiven for mistaking these, this bird for a harrier because of the white rump on a harrier, but in this case it's not just the rump. In fact, the rump isn't white. It's the tail itself that's white with that broad black tip. And a harrier won't show you that white-headed look either. Soaring high overhead, this you see the classic three patches of look of a rough-legged hawk. So they have the black belly and then dark wrist patches, big square dark patches on the wrists on the underside of the wings. You can see that at a tremendous distance and it's a great way to identify rough legs if you're lucky enough to see one here. All right, this is not a beautio. This is the Harrier, which used to be called Marsh Hawk, which was actually a great name for them because they are very frequently found around marshes and wetlands. They love to hunt wet meadows and marshes and wetlands of all kinds. The first thing you see and the, the key field mark for Harriers is that white patch, that white rump patch. It flashes even at a great distance. If you can't see anything else, you'll be able to see that rump patch flashing as they fly. They have a very distinctive flight, and I wish I had video to show you, because you can identify them pretty much by the way they fly. They're almost like a big butterfly. They're very buoyant, and they kind of float around with these languid wing beats. Uh, they go up and down a lot, and then you see that face pattern. They have a kind of an owl-like face. They actually can listen much like an owl does when they're soaring low over the fields and you'll see one suddenly fall to the ground. Almost looks like they've been shot. And uh, what's happening is they're cruising along listening for the rustle of small furry prey and they will just wheel and dive in an eye blink. Here's an immature, or no, sorry, here's a adult female Northern Harrier. So I almost call it immature because on most raptors, the immature birds have a streaked chest. If you've, went, if you've already gone through parts one and two of this series, you saw the streaked chest on the immature exhibitors and on the immature falcons. And that's true for uh, some of the beautios as well, like the red-shouldered hawk. But for harriers, it's actually the reverse. The adult females have a streaked chest immature harriers have a clear uh, kind of copper brown chest actually quite beautiful in the sun the other thing you see underneath on a harrier besides that face pattern is the dark wing tips and that shows up pretty good it's sometimes uh, looks like they've been dipped in ink they're a relatively long-tailed bird and long-winged so they're kind of intermediate in shape between a beautio and a falcon. Here's what's sometimes called the gray ghost. The male harrier, is, the adult male harrier, is uh, steel gray above and pale gray below. They still have that white rump patch. And for some reason, they're less commonly seen than females. They're sm considerably smaller and they are absolutely beautiful birds. Well, there you go. There's your introduction to Beautios and also the Harrier for comparison. Go out there and find a bunch of birds and happy birding. <laughs>